Hey, Freelancer, did you get that email I sent you? Yeah, I got it. I appreciate the notes. Um, I don't know. It's funny that we were talking about the Mesmer, and now all of a sudden, you know, they decide to go ahead and, like, leak a video. Oh, so, yeah, man. I've been hitting F5 but, uh, on the on the homepage all day just waiting for that post. Yeah. Well, let me check real quick here. Wait, 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 wait. No, Bridger, wait, wait. Before you head off for the night, check this out, man. Yeah, oh, it's been updated? It there. Yeah, it's... All it's, right, let me check... Yeah, I put it in the chat. Wait. What? What? What is this? No! No! No, 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 this is all wrong! ArenaNet, what are you doing to me? This is bullshit! No! F it, I can't! Ah! What the? Wait a minute. Hang on. Oh. Tonight on Tales of Tyria, we've got... Oh my god, Mesmer! Oh my god, Mesmer! Oh my god, Mesmer! Also, ArenaNet's AMA on Reddit. Stay tuned, it's coming right up. Welcome one, welcome all, welcome to another exciting episode of Tales of Tyria right here on the Sound Strategy Network. You can find us at talesoftyria.com. You can also find us on YouTube at Sound Strategy Network, the channel, or search for Tales of Tyria there. You'll find us. I am Bridger, a.k.a. Adam Ruzo, welcoming you to the show. This is your premier Guild Wars 2 podcast. Joining me, as always, to my bottom <laughs> left freelancer, <laughs> welcome. <laughs> How's it going, Bridger? Not bad, not bad. Uh, at least not after I discovered the folly of my error. And uh, also joining us, great, welcome, taking the place of Kai this week, hello. Hey, 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 great to be back. Good to see you again. Also, <laughs> we, we forgot uh, one person here, Bridger, it's Overseer Cat. <laughs> oh, okay, we got Background Bird and Overseer Cat, may they never meet. <laughs> Uh, so if you're not watching the video stream, uh, Freelancer has a cat sitting on the back of his chair, just observing <laughs> the, the, what's going on here. So if you're not watching well, the video and you're not watching live at, uh, on Sunday nights at 8, you are missing out. But uh, at the very least, you get to listen to this on, on your ride to work. That's when I listen to podcasts and stuff. Also joining us, Vega, Mr. J. Vega. Welcome, sir. Hi, everyone. So we have a bit of news to talk about this week, to put it lightly, uh, I guess you could say. What news? Wait, I, there's news? You didn't I get the memo? Rock. <laughs> <laughs> so let me ask you, how did you guys feel about... I mean, nobody was really fooled by, in actuality, by that, uh, that, by that reveal of the minstrel. Unfortunately. I nearly had a heart attack. <laughs> <laughs> it would have been much more convincing had the videos not leaked on Monday, uh, showing the Mesmer actually doing the mesmer things. Although if they had leaked a <laughs> minstrel video, like they did that commando video... That would have been awesome. Great thing like about that though. is it hit home because I played a minstrel like hardcore in Lord of the Rings. So, <laughs> <laughs> so my buddies were like, oh my god, it's a minstrel. And like my eyes lit up. I'm like, what? <laughs> oh, I thought you were going to be disappointed. All yeah. right. So <laughs> let's, let's talk about uh, there was a ridiculous amount of news that came out about, well, pretty much everything. Um, this past uh, this past week, they had the live dev chat. They had the ArenaNet AMA on Reddit, and they had uh, what was it? The like six or seven or eight other interviews that I guess had been embargoed until Wednesday because they all just showed up. And man, so did you guys have fun going through all that for the show, or are you just doing that anyway? <laughs> I love the world v world information that was released. Yes, um, I mean it's it's it was better than nothing. I mean we got player details for the most part. Well, you know about as far as caps go, we got uh, 
you know, zone details, uh, all sorts of little things like that. And they're still doing a huge special on that, so I'm pretty excited. Yeah, we know, uh, for instance, that on Tuesday, two days from now, is uh, they're going to be releasing a lot more information about the Thief, updates to the Thief, as well as some global cooldown information as to what they're doing with global cooldowns and all kinds of other oh, stuff. Oh, GCDs. Oh, man, GCDs. So why don't we take a look right here at, and let's see if this works correctly, yes, indeed. Let's take a look at the Mesmer information that we have on the main Guild Wars 2 website, because this is kind of the same thing that everybody is talking about. Um, why are we still laughing at the cat? Because it's the <laughs> internet? Is that there. the answer? <laughs> like, I'm trying Over, to present a very professional... not amused. Please continue with the podcast. <laughs> Thank you. Give it some headphones. Maybe it'll laugh at my jokes only if it hears them. I'm not even joking. I'm being serious, and serious cat is not amused. I think that's how it works. Anyway... <laughs> Let's talk about the Mesmer. So, the Mesmer is the third scholar class in the game, which means it wears light armor, and it is specifically primarily using illusions and uh, trying to confuse their enemy and, and uh, using magical power that usually is based in deception, but also sort of chaotic energy to just damage your opponent. Just like, here, have magical chaos. That's, that's for you. <laughs> I don't need it back. No, you can hold on to that. That's good. Um, so the, 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 the things that, that are very specific to the Mesmer are the illusions that they can create in the battlefield. One of them is called a clone. Clones have the caster's name and have very basic behaviors, but for all intents and purposes, they look exactly like the person casting it. So the idea is to make it difficult to immediately and instantly pick out you know, the caster from the clone. So you might attack the clone by mistake, and then uh, it was a trap. So... Then we also have Phantasms, and Phantasms look sort of like the caster, but they kind of have this shimmery translucence to them, so it's still easy to tell that they are not actually real things. However, they have more substance to them. They're a little bit harder to kill than clones, and they actually will do some kind of damage to you, usually, or they'll shut you down in some way. And the last thing that's really unique to the Mesmer is called the Mantras. Mantras are very special, probably utility skills uh, that you can equip uh, but I don't know, they might have them on weapon skills too. But the way that they work is they have a very long cast time to get prepped. Something like three, three or so seconds. And once they're prepped, then you hit the button a second time and they're instant cast to just boom, do whatever you need them to do. So they gave an example that one of these is like a healing spell that you can cast while you're doing something else. So you just prep this healing spell, it takes three seconds... To, to prep it, and now it's prepped. You can go into combat, you can be using all these other spells, you can be doing this channeling spell, and then in the middle of it, you go, shit, I'm low on health, and you hit the healing button, and you just instant heal. But you can't do that again until you prep it again for three seconds. So those are the, the very specific things to the Mesmer, but one that's kind of specific to the Mesmer in the, is the confused condition, and that's something that the Mesmer has a lot of. This is a new condition that they announced, that basically causes your opponent to take damage every time they use an ability. And the last thing they can do is shatter those illusions that they create in order to do various things to you. So rather than go into very specific detail on all this stuff, let's just talk about our thoughts. Um, what do you guys think? Uh, I know that Freelancer, you were very much looking forward to the Mesmer. What are your thoughts having finally seen how it's going to play? Uh, uh, you know, it's probably best not to let me go first because I'm going to crush everybody's hopes and dreams. <laughs> and it, 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 I'm so disappointed. But, um, really? Womp, womp. Yeah, all right, all right. it really we'll get is. To you yeah, then. You we'll that. get to you after then. Let's go to great. Yeah, go back to me later. <laughs> well, great. my what? thing is I, I wanted to play the Mesmer because we all knew it was going to be the last class. And yeah. good, good try troll by ArenaNet. Yeah. Good try troll. Um, that's why I actually said somebody probably got fired for that leak, because that was going to be amazing if it worked. But on the side note, it's like, I was banking on the reveal of the class to see how it actually would play. And I wanted a more heavy focus on illusions and, like, deception of the enemy. And I feel it kind of has that with the phantasms and clones. I feel it's kind of there. I'd have to see it more fleshed out, but I like the way it's looking. All right, Vega, what do you think, man? Um... Well, I, when, when the whole, I, I know everyone was saying that it was going to be the Mesmer. I was kind of hoping it wasn't going to be the Mesmer and that it would be, I don't know, some other kind of new class. I, I, knew, I knew it was going to be the Mesmer, but wishful thinking, I just, just, I was hoping for something more. 
Um, but now that they've kind of gave a little bit of detail about it, I mean, it seems interesting. And I think that given all the changes they've made to the game, um, I don't know what more they could have done to kind of make it like the old Mesmer of Guild Wars 1. Um, and at the same time, you know, a lot of things they were saying about how the original Mesmer, you know, they, they would throw all these conditions on you and hexes, and a lot of times you you just see your screen with a bunch of icons. You don't really know what they're doing to you. And now this Mesmer is a lot more visual. You know, you have the clones and all the illusions in front of you and things like that. So, But at the same time, I'm sure Freelancer is going to destroy everything, and I <laughs> still... And I, I could see where he's coming from, and I could see how people who were very much into the Mesmer of Guild Wars 1 would be disappointed by this Mesmer. All right, Freelancer. Time I'll, to put be, I'll be brief, because this is kind of obvious for most people, I would think. Um, okay, you said illusions, right, Bridger? Right. Right? Okay, what happens when I very quickly can tell the difference between your illusions? What are they doing to fix that? If you remember... Uh, well, in any MMO, I'm not really going to bring up examples. It, illusions, period. I mean, they're all the same way. Um, you would just look for the guy that casts different spells than the illusions. You know, if you're bursting somebody, if you have a any halfway decent group, and you're bursting different characters, you're using assist keys. It, at, you, there's going to come a point in time when you can just so quickly tell what are illusions, what are phantasms, and just dodge it and kill the mesmer um that it won't even matter so here's a question for everybody because i didn't hear anything about this if the mesmer dies do those phantasms disappear if the mesmer dies do those illusions or those copies disappear do you know that i don't think they said i didn't read anything i would imagine they would though i would imagine they would also okay so if they die and i just burst down the mesmer um every time he wants to use one of his silly little copying moves um, what is that class all about then? Okay, well, you got to teleport. Okay, big whoop. So does every other class. They have their own versions of, <laughs> of, of their own versions of teleport. So well, here I have a, I basically have an elementalist that can try to be cute without all the nuisance. I got to ask you a question. Why is everyone always trying to be cute? Why can't they just be pretty? Well, pretty. <laughs> and you got the pink flowery thing to go with it. I mean, it's <laughs> the, nice. the butterflies. The butterflies. Okay, because see, Mesmer in Guild Wars 1, and I'm not a Guild Wars 1 expert like Malkir last week and such, but I did play Mesmer. The reason I enjoyed Mesmer was because of the the altering, the, the combat altering uh, dynamics they had. They had everything from hexes to drains to... Uh, counters, debuffs, CCs, all sorts of stuff that could shut down any single player. What do you have to shut down a player with the Mesmer in Guild Wars 2? I'll answer that. Go ahead. You have Try a me. skill called Backfire. <laughs> you cast a Phantasm, and every time you cast a, that, that you try to use an ability, that Phantasm is going to punish you. You have a condition that punishes you for using abilities. These are things that you have to deal with on the battlefield, because if you just try to run past them and deal with the Mesmer, and just try to gun him down, he can use the shattering effects of those illusions as you run past the illusions and just try to ignore them. He will either cause them to cause damage on you, he'll use them to reflect projectiles back at you, he'll use them to cause confusion on you. So you can't just ignore the illusions, because they th those are major things that the Mesmer will use offensively at you with the specific shattering effects to either do damage to you, AOE damage to you and all the people around you, you will have to actively try and keep those things dead so that they don't get close enough to you to deal those shatter effects. You still come back to the basics of, of combat. If you're dealing with uh, 25 minions and a boss character, or if you're dealing with two phantasms and a mesmer, you still want to focus fire the mesmer so that you can get rid of everything else easily. I mean, you're talking about AOE phantasm. Okay, big whoop. I'm a thief. I go stealth and go around it. I mean, it's uh, I'm I'm being antagonistic here, but yeah, but I, I mean, just... it sounds like you're talking about a world versus world context and not a one versus one in like okay, a well, PvP competitive PvP go, system. Go solo one on one. If you were a thief or an elementalist and you have a mesmer and two phantasms and they're basically coming at you. How would you deal with it, Bridger? Well, 
It depends would you on what those would phantasms you the are, obviously. First? It depends on what the... Well, because the phantasms, remember, even though they take a little bit more damage than a clone, the phantasms can be killed relatively quickly. I'd say maybe one major damage spell and they're probably gone. Maybe two, depending upon which phantasm it is. I kind of get that impression anyway. They haven't really talked about it too much. So I if did. it takes one skill to knock the, the phantasm out of the way so it doesn't cause confusion on you, maybe that's worth it. And I think all of this boils down back to the AI. I mean... You have phantasms, okay? They, you know, they can do different things depending on your weapon, right? Um, you have clones, illusions, etc. But the problem with every other MMO, and I don't see any difference yet, yet being keyword here, in Guild Wars 2, is that once you discover what the AI script is for these phantasms, etc., and you're just bouncing between character to character, you're going to be able to quickly identify the mesmer and take them out. And if those phantasms, if that's a side effect or where they just disappear. Uh, then why would you ever go after the phantasms if you know that you're wasting your time? Because those phantasms are doing as damage as to you. Those are the active skills that that are doing damage to you, or they're causing problems for you. Okay. I, think it, I think it's so. Really if you take them out, to, you're taking out the mesmer's DPS. I think it's really going to come down to on just how much damage they do, because they're saying that clones don't do as much damage as clones phantasms. do. Basically, nothing to as far as I know, like pittance. Yeah. Of damage. I mean, I think they're it, there to, I think to it, cause confusion. I think also it's going to be, you know, if, if I'm a Mesmer and it's a one-on-one -on -one battle, you're going to see me cast something and clones are going to pop out. And it's going to be pretty easy to spot which is me and which is the clones. I don't think but it let's is. Say, it seems like every clone let's skill... let's say you cloak yourself. Let's say you throw down a little, like, cloaking field, and then you throw out some clones. Now three of me pop out, and now it's a little bit harder to tell. But I just think that... And it kind of depends a lot on how they're going to do the animations for the spells and how clones are going to pop out. And and speaking of that cloaking field, you know, in all right, I'm sure in PVE it would it look cool and you get a shiny shimmering effect and all of this. In PVP, it's like cloaking field. Everybody throw your AOEs on it. I mean, well, I don't think on. the enemy sees the shimmering. That's the thing. The shimmering so now, is what allies see. Of, the enemies see nothing. Yeah, but if you see three point, people though, disappear, if you're you going to know, like, oh. If you see a magical circle pop up or a mesmer casting and four people disappear, I mean, instead of them dying by AoEs normally, they die by AoEs while invisible. I mean, <laughs> and now now you can target them easier. And, and, I'm sorry. I'm, I'm going to be nice. <laughs> <laughs> well, I think that with regard to the clone skills, every example that they've given made it clear that they thought about trying to figure out which one is the clone. For example, one of the, I think it was the sword skills that they gave an example of, um, would be like Illusory Leap, where a clone would, appear, would pop out from your current position and leap at the opponent and start attacking them with the sword, like with the regular one skill. Or another skill on that same weapon is instead of the clone leaping forward and you just standing there pointing, you would leap forward and a clone would be left behind pointing. So each of those means that there's no way short of actually attacking one of those two objects to know which one of them is the real caster versus think, which one is the clone. I, I really think it's going to come down to how much damage the clones deal and how quickly they die. Because in either situation, if someone, let's say a mesmer leaps at me and I don't know what it is, I don't do anything. If it starts attacking me and I barely take any damage, I know that's the clone and the real Mesmer's over there. And then, yeah, I still have to deal with the clone a little bit, but if the clone dies in a hit or two, then it kind of makes it, you know, so the Mesmer buys himself, buys himself a few seconds. But I think that's you know, what the clones I, I, are for. The clones are not there to confuse you for, you know, the entirety of the fight. The clones are there just as a distraction enough so that you have to spend an activation of a skill to figure out if that clone is actually the Mesmer. Because in order to kill a clone, you just need to hit it with anything, basically. But what that means is you're spending the time and the skill cooldown to hit that thing to make it disappear, to confirm that it's not actually the clone. You're gonna guess, this one's the clone and that one's the real guy, so I'm gonna try and shoot at the real guy. And if you're wrong, you've just wasted some damage. And meanwhile, the Mesmer has been hitting you the whole time. So the clones are doing that. And the other example that they gave, for example, is the caster teleports a short distance and a clone appears directly next to him. So 
I get that impression that they're teleporting to a random location somewhere right next to you, and then a clone appears at a random location right around you so that there's no way for the person observing to know which one's the real one and which one's the clone. So those mm -hmm. are just small things that, and then now that clone, whichever one is the clone, is going to come at you and probably start attacking you either with whatever, however the spell has specifically worked. And that means that you have to either figure out, okay, is this one over here the clone or is that one over there the clone? And if the clone gets next to you and you decide to ignore it because it's the clone, bam, he shatters it. And now you're confused or now you just took damage. And if you decide that one is the clone, you're going to waste some damage on it. So I think there's a lot well, of potential here, but it comes down to how, tweak, how, tw how it's tweaked. Also, it, kind of, it seems like everything we're kind of talking about right now is all 1v1s. You know, how's Certainly. it going to work in... How's it going to work in team battles where... Tell me how you know, awesome clones... it would be if 10 Mesmers just turned into 30. Come on. Tell me that wouldn't be awesome. <laughs> yeah. Well, when you word it like that. <laughs> <laughs> Which one is in real? Groups. Mesmer and mass. That'll fix all problems. Actually, I think, no, I think the each problem of them can have the three clones, clones is... right? Each can have three clones, I think they said? Yeah. Three no, it's clones two, or and then three the illusions. Mesmer. Three illusions? You might be able to trade it or something later. I mean, we never know. I mean, I was trying to play the bad guy here, but I think it really is going to come down to seeing some actual gameplay video. You know, nobody really knows how the Mesmer plays at the moment, so all we can really do is speculate. Yeah, pretty much. So, <laughs> what do you guys think? The mantras seem very interesting. Um, and, and that's certainly a very unique thing to this class is that you're going to get some very powerful instant cast abilities that you're probably only going to be able to use once in combat uh, because they have such a long cast time the second time that you use them, basically. No thoughts? Okay. Mantras aren't well, cool. Let's go on. I, I mean, it is what it is. It it's, is what it is. Yeah. It's, not, it's not something really exciting. In my opinion. Okay, okay. It's very bland. But it's I, like, oh, you can cast a spell and then use it in the middle of combat. Okay. I mean, it, it, I think that's, that's more of a, it kind of, it makes the, mes the actual player Mesmer himself kind of try and like plan ahead or kind of have a plan of attack and not just sort of freelance it when he uh, is running around. <laughs> you know, he, he has to pick a mantra, you know, know that he's going to use this mantra and then kind of plan his little battle around that. So, well, it, I mean, it, it kind of adds a little bit to the to the player itself. Here's what I think. It's like, I feel the Mesmer is a very off-the-dome kind of class. Like, they have to make these really interesting, like, do I go out there or do I stay here? Like, do I make my clone go out or do I make my clone stand where I was? And I think those are, like, really in-battle decisions that you have to make. But when you have to, like, plan ahead, like, oh, I'm going to want to use this ability in battle, you don't know that. Like, I think the, it goes well, no, totally against, like, the well, flow of the Mesmer. No, 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 not well, necessarily. No, it, you're going to have mantras on your bar and theoretically every time you're out of combat you're going to prep them and then when you get into combat you're going to use them whenever they're available whenever, whenever you need them but i mean they're going to be like utility skills you decide which utility skills are going to go best with this build right and some of those are it probably going to be mantras i think it kind of, it kind of sways you into are you going to be more of a the mesmer that's annoying everyone and doing shatters and putting all these conditions, or are you going to be one that's trying to get in there and do some damage? So then you want to pick a mantra that either is going to you know, help heal you if you need to get out real quick, or something that's going to help deal a little more damage if you're the one that's doing, trying to be the damage dealer as opposed to a more support class. Well, let me, give, uh, let, me, let me read something from the Game Informer interview. They specifically chose to create illusions as physical manifestations because it's easier to understand what's going on than hexes. So if you remember, the, the Mesmer in Guild Wars 1 was all about throwing conditions on the opponent and trying to hex them and debuff them. What they basically wanted to do is create physical versions of those hexes where instead of just having them represented by a little icon on your screen, they're represented by a physical thing. Backfire is a spell in Guild Wars 1 that causes you to take damage every time you try to use one of your abilities. In this one, it's a phantasm that can be debuffed, or, uh, well, um, what's the word, uh, removed, basically. Have that condition that is the phantasm removed by hitting it with your weapon, right? So I think that's it's a very interesting a thing to do. It's still a debuff. Like, you're, right. you're still doing damage, but it's just like, and you're still, you, you only focus illusions on one person. And it, it's... It's a debuff, but it's in a real world. It's weird. Yeah, I, because I, they I don't want to like that conditions. choice, though. From especially from a spectator point of view, if you're it's kind of it's kind of lazy in my opinion, because like they said, they don't want there no there's like no like debuffs. There's only conditions. So instead of just making the mes like trying to 
find a way. They just give them debuffs, but in a different way. Yeah. It's not like well, they redefine I, the class. I, I, I like how they did it, though, because, I mean, you know, last episode we were talking about, well, you know, we all know it's going to be the Mesmer, but we know how the Mesmer was in Guild Wars 1 and how you can't have that just a complete copy in Guild Wars 2 just because of how many things they've changed in the mechanics. And I think they did a pretty good job of, you know, having the Mesmer still at the core. A Mesmer is all about control and sort of deception. And I think they did a really good job of having the Mesmer in Guild Wars 2 sort of still follow that basic principle of trying to control what other what their enemies are doing and trying to deceive them with you know the clones and, and fantasisms and stuff can you imagine as a mesmer and this is a completely random thought sorry guys but can you <laughs> can you imagine as a mesmer having a tactic for your guild called thinking with portals you place a portal on <laughs> you place a, one of these little you know that little t portal thing they have on the outside of an enemy keep you sneak in somehow, some way to the Keep Lord or whatever it might be, and you place another one of these within radar range and have your entire guild rush in. Can That's you imagine awesome. that? I love that. I just yeah. it's gonna be difficult Freelancer to sneak him in. Here. It's gonna be difficult <laughs> to sneak him in. I mean he does have well, they some got invisibility. Kind of... They got invisibility though. They well and they, they have leap. invisibility they in a leap. single area. <laughs> And they can leap tall buildings in a single bound. <laughs> the yes. other thing that they pointed out in the developers chat, you can knock players into their own team's portal. So like if you have a knockback ability and somebody like is coming is trying to escape using a portal and you're at the other end of that portal, you can knock them back through the portal to the other side <laughs> nope. when they're getting hit by your own team. I just love that nope. as an idea. <laughs> Get in there. That's, that's a definitely a nope moment. Um, <laughs> the Mesmer Elite, did you guys see this? No. The, 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 the skill, the Moa Bird. You turn someone, oh, yeah. you have a polymorph ability where you turn them into a Moa Bird and they get all of the skills that the Moa Bird NPC has in combat. <laughs> you get like, like peck and, um, and kick or something like that just to add insult to injury. It's a funny, it's a, like a, it's a really funny skill to have, but is it really Mesmer? Like, is that really illusion? Is that, it would be cool to make them think they're mobile birds, so like all their abilities would do that, but they're still like a person. It's just like, uh, or the way it sounds right now, it's just like a polymorph. It is a polymorph, yeah. yeah. Uh, but I mean, what they try to do with the Mesmer is what it sounds like is not only illusion, but also chaos magic. Like if the sorcerer, or sorry, the elementalist is someone who carefully crafts these elemental powers and uses them and has study for years and years. I kind of see the Mesmer as like the fourth edition sorcerer. He's like this guy that just, he doesn't have any formal training. He just tears the fabric of magic and throws it at you. Like, and that's sort of a chaotic magic sign of thing. That's where he gets his magic because they have the chaos storm that applies random conditions to you and things like that. Um, so I, I really always loved the ability, the concept of like the chaotic sorcerer that just random stuff happens because he doesn't know what he's doing, but he's really powerful at what he's doing, even though he doesn't know. So, oh, I, just, I, I always like that. So I, I was very excited when I saw that kind of combination. Did, did anyone else just get one of those moments where like, this is my class when they saw the guy with the great sword shooting purple electricity? I mean... <laughs> <laughs> I gotta admit that I watched that whole leaked leak trailer or you know video before it mm -hmm. came live, and and I'm like, okay, this isn't too exciting. You know, I'm a little disappointed. And then I saw the guy with the great sword shooting purple, like force lightning. You know, and I'm like, yeah. this is a Star Wars reference. I just know it. Yeah. Well, you know what's really interesting is the great sword is like a ranged focus for the Mesmer. That that specific um, ability, I don't remember what it's called, but it does more damage the further away that you are with the great sword. It's a really counterintuitive thing. Like the, the biggest, baddest sword that you can whack things with, you want to be as far away from someone as possible because the Mesmer well, just goes, uses it as an awesome focus. That goes, that goes with the whole theme of the Mesmer though, you know? Oh yeah, that's and right. If, it's if a deception. Saw, if, you saw, if you saw anyone else carrying a great sword, you'd be like, all right, well, I got to keep my distance. <laughs> It's but exactly right. Blast, blast him. Great sword and he's like, crap, I got to really get close to him even though he's carrying that giant sword. <laughs> so... Another piece that I saw from the developer's chat, technical information like range and attack speed will not be visible to players, but will provide DPS dummies and other tools to allow players to test, similar to things that they had in Guild Wars 1. So that's... 
That's so silly. Yeah. Come on, come on, people, arena net. If you don't put that those kind of that kind of stuff in the game, players are gonna do it for you, and it's gonna make you look bad. I mean, no, you don't do that. I guarantee well, but within. But then they were saying, but then they were saying they don't even want to have, um, you know, outside. UI. There are going to be min maxers like myself that will <laughs> look at the nitty gritty details. You mean math I mean, crafters? If they don't... <laughs> math crafters, right? I call it min maxer, but <laughs> theory crafters. They craft it's gonna, theory. It's going to be the guy that looks at the the one agility point versus the five percent extra attack speed, and they'll sit there for hours trying to determine <laughs> which one does better for them. Yeah. Okay, got to do a controlled test. We're going to attack the Moa bird. Okay, that one took you fifteen point two seconds to kill. Now equip the other sword. Okay, that was fifteen point one, but that could have been a random. That could have that was within the error bars. We're going to have to do three hundred sounds... more tests. We'll talk about this another day, but, I mean, it sounds silly to a lot of people, like, okay, wow, it's just one agility, you know, no big deal, metaphorically. But when you add that on to the fact that the guy tweaked his one strength on his armor, the guy tweaked his uh, 20 attack power, we're speaking in wild terms, obviously, his 20 attack power on his dagger, and he does all these little minor tweaks, that's a min-maxer. And then when they get into that raid, you know, when they get into the PvP, and you're wondering, like, Man, how do, you know? I have the same build as you. How do you? How are you doing two thousand more DPS than me? And then it's not so funny anymore when they start to go through those notions. If ArenaNet decides to try to block those little details, um, people are going to do it for them. I mean, it was just, it happened like that in WoW. It happened like that in Lord of the Rings, where they didn't have the details of your attack speed and your armor rating and all this. But there, I, I would place a wager right now, live, live on this stream, that within the first half year they're going to put that information in because too many people rely on that they, and they that might like even that. be the plan i definitely i definitely agree with that though i mean have it's it's one thing i like having that basic information so if someone does want to min max it you know they, they they're there but for someone who's a little more casual they don't really got to pay attention to it um but at the same time i don't i, I like how they don't want to have user based um like mods to the UI and everything. Yeah, they said they won't allow add-ons to the UI. And I, and I, and I really like that because I, I hated that in WoW where you know pretty much it's just who knows how to use the UI better and the add-ons better. I completely agree with that. Right. But, you know, but the like, problem let's, was let's when play WoW... the game for the game instead of who can read the bars and the grabs and everything better. Right. See, we got. I, I'm hearing you know I love you guys in chat. Some of you guys were like. Um, you know, that this min-maxing killed Rift or min-maxing killed this, min-maxing is bad and stuff. The people that say that generally just haven't had the chance to try to customize that and get into that. Now, there's a difference between having a UI mod that auto-heals for you. We all know about that one. Versus a somebody that has taken his time to develop and tweak his character to such a length that he performs just 5% better. I mean, that's th there's a difference there because that player obviously put in more time, more thought, more intelligence into it, and therefore he should be rewarded. Whereas a UI mod, yeah, I completely agree with you there, Jay, because some of those UI mods are just stupid. I, I think mean, the only yeah, reason I mean, that add-ons were really, really like championed and people loved add-ons in World of Warcraft is because the interface when it first came out was crap compared to the add-ons that could be made over the course of the game's life. Blizzard basically sucked features from all of the most popular add-ons and made them part of the game's internal interface. And that's yeah. kind of the interface that we now know of as the MMO interface. It has all these features. Check the box, you know? And those features all came from other people. It's kind of like a crowdsourcing method. But because we have that experience in other games, we probably won't need it in Guild Wars 2, assuming ArenaNet does a good enough job with it, right? So as long as ArenaNet doesn't take the shortcut and maybe maybe the add-ons was a shortcut for Blizzard, so they wouldn't have to worry about the interface. We'll just let the community do it. Well, I think I think uh, just the design of Guild Wars 2 and the fact that you only have you know an eight skill skill bar, you know that in itself that you know that simplifies the, the UI completely. Whereas WoW, you have freaking 150 <laughs> skills on cluttering your screen, and there's this one little box where you see your character, you know. I, that's not the that's not a game. That's just you know, <laughs> I, like the UIs yes. the UIs that that have like a you could have an alarm go off where my skill's done with cooldowns now I could cast it again, 
you know, even something as minor as that, that is, you know, it takes away from the game. The whole point of someone who's better is someone who knows how to look at all their skills and know when they have to do this and have that rotation as opposed to, oh, my, my alarm went off. I got to hit that button again. You know? <laughs> Come on, tell us what you really think, Jay. <laughs> <laughs> Um, he hates mods. I'll tell, I'll tell you what. I'll tell you what. I hate <laughs> you know what really him. grinds my gears? Now, oh God. They, they have mentioned that weather uh, can be random, that weather in any peri- area might be random, but it also might be tied to dynamic events. They gave an example that a snowstorm, like a blizzard, might be kicked off if a particular event is failed because maybe, I don't know, they didn't give the, the specific reasons but maybe uh the players are trying to stop an evil wizard from casting some crazy weather related weather control spell and if they don't stop it then bam blizzard starts happening and now they have to you know try and get relief to the towns that didn't have enough food or something like that new parts of the dynamic event are are kicked off and i love that concept that's really cool yeah so we're getting a little off topic here (laughs) well i'm just going through the list of things that i found in the developers chat that's 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 what we're doing now um but if you want to go back to the Mesmer, we can talk more about the Mesmer. No, no, no. <laughs> Freelancer wants to take more shots at the Mesmer. <laughs> Tonight at 11. Um, now, here's a, big, here's a big bit of news that really uh, everybody heard about, but probably a lot of people are disappointed about, is the closed beta started uh, three, two days, three days ago. Uh, invite only. I haven't gotten my email, but I got assume that's invite. simply because got it got it. lost in the tubes somewhere, and ArenaNet will fix that eventually. <laughs> But, yeah, I kind of expected it to be a closed, an actual closed beta. A lot of people hear closed beta, they go, they're only going to let in about 10,000 people. No, that's not really what a closed beta is. That's called a limited open beta, usually. Um, So I'm guessing we'll see maybe an open beta by February-ish, based on the fact that they did go into closed beta when they said they were going to, which was December-ish. So that's good. They cut it real close. I don't even think it'll be open beta by February. I think it'll be... Now, now you could, I think it'll be now, like mid-January, mid to end January, now you could sign up, and then February, we're going to send out invites to the public. Yeah. I think for Christmas, there should be a, like a Christmas present theme thing on Guild Wars 2 saying, here's your Christmas present, you can sign up for open beta. <laughs> <laughs> now, the open yeah. beta won't be for another two months, star, but... <laughs> <laughs> Star. You can still sign up. For Asterisk. <laughs> Asterisk. Uh, so, <laughs> all right. Before we move on to the Arena Net AMA, which I thought was amazing, by the way. Uh, anything else that you guys wanted to talk to uh, talk about with regards to the Mesmer or any of this uh, these interviews or the developers chat that they had there? Well, they did say one thing. Like I remember, I know it's going to kind of side into the I- a- AMA a little bit, but somebody asked, are we going to see more footage of the Mesmer? Because people are like, there's a lot of things we don't know. Tons of things. Yeah. And I think in the AMA, he says, we're going to see about releasing maybe, this is a big maybe, maybe actual footage of the Mesmer and maybe actual PvP footage. Right, and that's I before the, that's next exactly. de- the next like, convention. Because yeah. we're like a con dry land right now, where yeah. there's no cons. Well, CES is in January, but I don't think that's something they'd go to. That's the only big con mm. that I can think of that happens before PAX East. But I don't know all of them off the top of my head. Um, but, you know, when, when you think about it, they spent a huge amount of their developers' time. They had, you know, the lead designers and, and, and testers and producers out there doing interviews, doing the AMA, doing the Guild Wars developer chat. And that, that I mean, they've been spending all that time promoting the Mesmer and the game. They need to get back to actually making the game. If they have to set aside more time for somebody to make videos and then edit the videos and, and do all this other stuff, that whether they have that time or not is the real question. So if we don't see any more, I wouldn't read too much into it. But some people are going to be like, the Mesmer's not complete because they didn't show real footage. I don't know. We'll see. Well, maybe they'll, maybe they'll lift the NDA. <laughs> lift. Maybe. In like yeah. two months. <laughs> Yeah, that's that's a good one. That's, heard that's pretty good. <laughs> yeah, we saw the Swotor NDA go up like what a month ago, and it's coming out in next this week actually. Yeah. So, so 
I had a quote here, a specific question. It was actually the first question in the whole AMA. By the way, if you if you want to really read this, for those of you that don't know, AMA stands for Ask Me Anything, and it's a thing that happens on a website called Reddit.com, and basically people go on there and say, I am a blank, ask me anything. So I am a guy who traveled Europe for the last 10 years, ask me anything. I am someone who works in the White House, ask me anything. This was, I am working for ArenaNet on Guild Wars 2. My name is, uh, was, it, was it Eric Flanham or, or uh, John? It was John. John Peters. Working, yeah. I am John Peters. I'm working on Guild Wars 2. Ask me anything. And so that happened. Um, but he, one of the questions, and there are links to these in the show notes, by the way. How will you be able to do an instance with five rangers with short bow slash dagger set? And the answer was how you play your profession and skills are more important than what you bring. We talk about eight professions, but it kind of a misnomer because each weapon set is like a whole new build. They keep, they keep harping on this, and a number of other questions very similar to this got the same kind of answer is, oh, you can totally do these things with exactly the same build. All players at the same build in this dungeon, no problem. And I'm thinking at, to myself, really? At 30% efficiency. Exactly. Like, <laughs> if that's true, then these things must be easy if you actually try to min-max it, which is really disappointing. But I think they're just trying to make the point that... Well, I, mean, I think I think they're being vague on purpose. They're yeah. saying, "Yeah, you can do it." <laughs> is it going? Is it going to take you forever? Are you going to die a lot? Most likely, but if you <laughs> stick it out, yeah, you can do it. I think if you did five rangers that had different builds on purpose, that might be much more much more useful. And if you decided, okay, we need two rangers because they can do these two jobs really well, and then we probably need a, a warrior and a and an elementalist or something, then that would even be even better. And and that's the kind of thing that I hope we're going to see. And I think what they're trying to promote is the idea that if you and your friends all want to play the same class, go get them, buddy. You can do whatever you want in our game. You don't have to wait for a healer. Like that's been their whole big pitch, right? That's part of their big promotion. Yeah. And I think that is going to be true to some extent, but they, I think they, they overstepped the bounds on that particular well, I, kind I of think, question. I think that it's, they're saying you could do it, but they're just not saying that it's going to be a hell of a lot harder to do it. Right. Which is still, which is still you know, better than, no, you really can't. You know, like if, if, if you ask the WoW developer, so can five um, hunters go in there and do this? No. No, you can't do yeah, that. Yeah, that's just you the answer. Even, just you, won't even kill, no. you might kill the first mob, but maybe yeah. that's it. <laughs> exactly. Good luck. So, this is another cool, neat piece of information. Once you get to level 30, it's about 90 minutes per level all the way to 80. So that That's is something. about where the that was. Ends. That was interesting. Now, I wonder if they're assuming you play casually or, or if they assume you're, like, really trying to level or... That's what um, I was wondering. Is this they said assuming for a, in for a decent world player. versus world? For a decent player, I think is so. this assuming in world versus world or doing quests? I mean, the, I do I, like that they said 90 minutes. Though. I was pretty excited to hear that because I mean, if it were my choice, it would be you know three hours. <laughs> but but uh, I mean, it it gives you that sense of accomplishment, you know. But if you're doing I, PvP, it's not going to matter anyway. So I really think that they got that number. Um, I feel like the only way they could really get that number is they know, okay, here is what your level is. Here's the general area you're going to be in. Here are the quests. I think they're pretty much just going on if you just did the quests from your level to your level. Yes. I feel like that's the only way they could really get an accurate 90 minutes, you know? Well, I mean, they've probably been focus cause, testing, cause too. Because I, I think it's, you know, what if someone is just doing really well in PvP or world, world versus world? Aren't they going to level up a lot faster than 90 minutes? I'm, I'm hoping that 90 minutes is more of, like, the very slow. Well, I think Can you 90 imagine minutes being... was their target. They decided how fast we want people to level, and the answer was, I think 90 minutes per level is a good number. Let's try to tweak our XP to make that number possible. So they bring in somebody for focus testing, and they say, you're brand new to the game. Let's see how you do. Okay, you're one of our testers that's been doing this for a long time. Just sort of go through this area normally and play dynamic events. Let's see how you do. And they said, okay, this guy over here is clearly leveling too fast for our 90 minutes thing, so let's try to tweak those numbers a little bit. That's how I'd guess that they do it, because they've been sh throwing out that 90 minutes number for a long time now. Yeah, they have. Yeah. But there's so many ways to level up. You have the dungeons, you have quests, you have dynamic events, you have PvP, you have True World vs. World. So I feel like it, it, for them to take into account all those different variables and say it's going to be 90 minutes, 
I think it's, well, I think it's a good about. estimate. They said yeah, about. Yeah, I think it's a good estimate. It's better than, you know, like when you start getting into higher levels of uh, WoW when you got to spend, you know, days getting from <laughs> level to level. Days. <laughs> Which is true, actually. Yeah. Especially if you were a casual. I never made it to max level, ever. Not in the first one, not when I came back for the Burning Crusade, and not when I came back for the Cataclysm. I never made it to max level. I always just got tired of, like, this is the same old shit. Why didn't I remember? Why did I buy the expansion? I should have known so, better. Look at it from this point of view, alright? If I did my math right here, 90 minutes times, what, it said starting at level 30, 30 right? 30, yeah, so about 60 levels. 30. So, you're looking at... 45 hours of gameplay. Don't forget to carry the, the two. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> um, That's almost... That there is like te like four times what I get for games that will probably cost like $60 right now. Okay, and so that's one whatever class. it might be, can you imagine... All right, you paid... I mean, on another note, you paid 60 whatever if they have a collector's edition, $90 for... <laughs> I mean, that's a lot of gameplay if you think yeah. about it. No, it's know? definitely a good yeah, trade. Well, that's, that's starting at level 30. How long does it take to get to level 30? Yeah. Probably less, but still. I mean, right there, that already beats my Skyrim time that I had put in. And I put a lot of time in Skyrim. Yeah. So, yeah, I think that sounds like a good number. Um, let's see. Oh, I should also point out, we've been throwing this thing around, but I know I read somewhere, and I don't know if I'm, I'm, I wrote it down here somewhere, but what I read is that you will level up and gain experience in A... PvE, B, world versus world, but not competitive PvP. You will not earn experience and level up in competitive PvP. Oh, That's I'm one sure. thing I read in one of these, I think it's in the AMA somewhere. Um, so that is something that's very different than what I thought, but it kind of makes sense, and you know, I don't know that I mind that much, because in, in competitive PvP, you're leveled straight to 80, you're given everything already. Your character is not, in effect learning anything in that environment really <laughs> but in world versus world you might be leveled up but you still have the stuff all the skills and stuff from the lower levels so you're still learning things in that environment i guess i don't yeah. know it's it's an interesting decision i'm not really that worried about it uh let's see here's an interesting concept when asked about whether people will be able to switch a utility skills um or b their weapon sets when out of combat. Like say, I've got a, I've got a great sword and I've got a longbow as a, as, a, as a ranger. And out of combat, on the PAX demos, you were just able to, to as soon as you finished killing somebody, you know, and you left combat, you could, you know, okay, I want to change this utility skill and I want to change it from a great sword to instead a short bow, and I'm going to go short bow and longbow. What they said was that it actually works a bit differently, but we definitely don't want people swapping between each combat. What that kind of says to me is that the, yeah, okay, funny guy. What that says to me <laughs> is that you're basically going to be restricted to only changing those things after you die, which I am not worried about, really. I don't know. What do you guys think? Uh, I mean, it's saying, okay. When you cast a skill that removes a condition, you remove the whole stack of conditions. That's essentially what it's saying, right? That's not even what I'm talking about. No, you aren't listening I'm, at all. I'm, I'm reading what you just what you went to. <laughs> I was talking about the fact that you won't be able to change weapons or utility skills it, out of combat. You'll probably only be able to do it after you die uh, in PvP. Bridger's not following his own notes. <laughs> I skipped that one because it's not super interesting. That's, okay. that's what the host does. We've got to keep things moving, man. <laughs> oh, and it's moving. <laughs> All right. Anyway, I guess that one's not super interesting either. Uh, let's see. What do we got next? Multiple attacks. That's good. Oh, yeah, I told you we're going to get the blog post on Tuesday. Oh, and a lot of people have been noticing there weren't really any melee skills that the Mesmer used in any of those videos. They confirmed that the Mesmer will have up-close and personal attacks in addition to ranged. Whether that means you blast them with magic from two feet away or you actually hit them with something physically is, a, is still a question that we'll have to find out. Uh, let's see. This is something that I was kind of disappointed about, that you can't control the clones. They have an AI, which, as you said, Freelancer makes it much easier to read them than if the person could control them in some way. Yeah. Once you read them, I mean, that's it. So. Yeah, I think I think that would change a whole lot if you're able to control them. 
Because I would like to you tell, know? like, okay, I want to create a clone and I want to make it run that way while I run this way. Exactly. And he doesn't know which one to chase. That's what I want. Yeah. But if the only option is I create a clone and the only way to fool them is for both of us to run blindly and attack him because that's the only thing the clone will do, then he's going to well, throw an AOE and, and hit us both. <laughs> so if you, if you summon a clone, does it have to attack anything? The clone, by default, I believe, uses... Um, like, the... what, if you, what if you do that leap where the clone stays where you were and you leap somewhere? I don't know. I mean, I think each, each type of clone skill might act slightly differently, but in general, they usually just attack. Because um... I remember one of the interviews, was, was it on the Game Informer or whatever, where the guy was saying that sometimes as a mesmer, the best thing to do is just not attack, you just stand there. Yeah, and that confused and me and too. Hope that, and hope that you, you just get mixed into the bunch and they think, oh, it's not doing anything. That's, that, that, so know, that's sometimes, not that sometimes clones won't do anything, I don't know. But yeah, I yeah, read so, that part too. That's the biggest problem I have with the clones. Like, they, he says, oh yeah, people can learn how the clones work. I'm like, well, why should they learn how the clones work? Shouldn't the clones, like, kind of be what they are? They're supposed to be an illusion, not, like, something that the player has to replicate. I would like for them to be more chaotic and, like, have a random AI every time you summon them. Maybe they'll attack at range. Maybe they'll attack you. Maybe they'll, you know, back up and then attack or something. <laughs> not attack you, but I mean, maybe they'll attack at range. Maybe they'll run straight at your, the, the target or something like that. Where, you know, it's not an instant, okay, that one's the clone because it's the only one charging me. And when you use that teleport skill, the clone always charges. So, I don't know. Um, it's going to depend a lot on, like, uh, somebody mentioned earlier in our chat, you know, wouldn't it be cool if you could set up, like, AI script or, like, actually set up a more than just passive, aggressive, defensive, that kind of thing uh, for your clones? I mean, what if you could assign them to always, you know, stay put or rush forward or run to the left? Exactly. Or, you know, it'd be neat. I mean, it's just a nice little idea. So what happened I just to think... the chat? Are we having protests that Aku is not here? <laughs> it's it's mad, going apparently. on? Like He's a like a fan base, apparently. Is this the 1% invading the chat? I don't know what's going on. <laughs> and what was going on with that dude that always was typing with periods? Did his space bar was know. broken, maybe? <laughs> space bar was broken. <laughs> that was weird, man. That'd be funny. Is he still in here? Yeah, he's, still in. he's still in here. I don't know. He was, he, he was like, I'm determined to give feedback, but I have no space bar. Period, period, period. All right. <laughs> See, this is what you miss when you don't watch it live, guys. And this is something that I'm very excited about because they said they're going to look at making bleed, poison, and burning feel and play different and not these do damage over time and they have different looking effects. And I'm very happy to hear that because they were very much similar and I hope that they find some way to do it better. Well, all right, can I get back to the stat, the little status <laughs> things? I'm sorry, you that want, is really, that's a big deal. I really want to get there. I really do because can you imagine, okay. I mean... You put all of these status ailments on something, and then if I'm reading this right, one you know cleanse will just take them all off. Is that right? Am I reading that correctly? Oh, oh, you, oh I'm sorry. That's the one you wanted to talk about. Okay, yeah, no, that no. is a huge thing for no, no, PvP. No. I think it what, should be what mentioned. I read. What, what I meant was when I wrote that um, that the if you remove an a, a, a condition, let's say bleeding. Maybe you have yeah. nine stacks of bleeding on you, but you're also chilled and you're also confused. When you cast an ability that removes a condition, a condition, it will remove all of the stacks of bleeding, but it won't remove any of the okay. other conditions. But it will move an entire stack, but it, but not, you know, there may be some skills that are like elites that just cleanse everything of all allies around you or something for all I know. But for, for abilities that remove a single condition, it will remove all instances of that condition on the target. Does that make sense? No, oh, that's how, that's what I understood. I just wanted to make sure because if you, if you, I mean, if you have a skill that just removes all conditions, I mean, can you imagine a game that's centered that's putting so much focus on CCs, um, and all of these broke. different? Yeah, it'd be broken. So I just right. want to make sure that the uh, this little Reddit chat didn't say that. Didn't you know? slip in some information. Yeah. That, <laughs> oh, the game's terrible. It's broken. We'll never play it again. Cancel the podcast. Everything's gone. <laughs> all right. Well, been fun. <laughs> it's been fun. 11 episodes. Later. That's that's a good that's a good run, guys. <laughs> all right. <laughs> going to end it now. End it now. And end it on a high note. So, um interrupts. They specifically said and I guess I misspelled it all the time. Um <laughs> 
I'm going to fix that before anybody on the audio <laughs> hears it. Uh, I mean, reads it. So interrupts. There's no such thing as just an interruptibility. This ability interrupts things. Instead, anything that either stuns you, knocks you back, launches you, or dazes you is an interrupt. So instead of just having a boring, this skill interrupts, you know, the, the elementalist channeling, if you have something that knocks them back or stuns them, that counts as an interrupt. And I don't mind, that seems like a very cool thing. It's just a nice clarification that they made um, to some people that had a question about why there was no interrupts in the game. And I remember we had a discussion on the Team Legacy forums about why we didn't see anybody interrupting the, um, the kill animations, like the execution animations or the revive animations in the PAX demos, for example, or the Gamescom demos. And that might be just because they didn't realize that these stuns also work as interrupts. Or maybe in that point it was not working that way. But it's good to hear that, you know, because I know a lot of classes have knockbacks and, and stuns and, and dazes and things like that. Yeah, knockbacks is one of those things that's really iffy. Like, even now, me and a lot of other uh, guild members and such, I'm sure a lot of people here are listening. If you... if in Aeon and Warhammer, which is really, really bad with knockbacks, um, it, if you have too many knockbacks, I hope it's not one of the things that every class gets, because if you have too many knockbacks, it, I mean, can you imagine how frustrating it'd be if you're a thief and you, you do take the time to sneak up on somebody and then they knock you back, but you happen to be on that ever so slight incline hill and you get sent way far away? <laughs> and, because and, gravity and, you know, you in MMOs doesn't work normally. Stuff. I mean... <laughs> And then, all right, you finally make it back up the hill, and they, they want to troll you, so they <laughs> knock you back again. I mean, it, it's... Yeah, if, if, if everyone has knockbacks, I could see a lot of, oh, well, that guy's doing a lot of damage. Someone go knock him down. Someone go yeah. knock him back. When Someone they... go knock him back and just have a perma stun on him. Yeah, when they, uh, I mean, what, what, what class was it in WoW that it eventually got the knockback? It was uh, Shaman, I think, if I'm not mistaken. Um where you could go in a battleground near a cliff and just send an entire group of players off the side of the cliff. <laughs> oh, yeah. the thunderstorm, I remember that. All right, uh, now that's just one. All right, in, in Warhammer, um, I exclusively played an Archmage, and we had what was called a Cleansing Flare that did the same thing, except that I could cast it on the enemy's wall and send all of the defenders on the wall flying towards my group. <laughs> okay. So they're now up on the battlements like, men, we have the advantage of height, we have these nice uh, crenulations here to protect us from, whoa! It, it's bad. I mean, knockbacks, I don't, I don't know. I, I can't dare say that they don't belong in the game, but knockbacks are one of those things that are what I call, like, random, you know? And if you get hit by it in the wrong way or the right way, it has nothing to do with skill. You get sent whichever way, and it has... It just ruins things, and it gets frustrating. When you, if you get a group, an organized group, like that knows the knockbacks and how to abuse them, uh, it's it's just frustrating because they'll just go around intentionally, not not playing the game, but they'll wait for you to get close to that cliff and knock you off the cliff. I mean, that is their source of fun. And while you're spending five minutes falling down this cliff, they're laughing their little tails off, waiting for you to come back up so that the second guy in a row can do it. I mean, it's, uh, knockbacks are going to be interesting. Yeah, yeah, that's definitely true. But I really like the look of them, like in some of the videos that they've revealed so far. Like seeing, oh, there we go, fix that. <clears throat> seeing the, the, uh, like, hammer that the Guardian uses, and just when it hits an opponent, the, the, the what are those lizard things, just kind of go flying backwards, almost like ragdolling as they die. Like, those kind of effects are really cool. And so I'd lo I love seeing those in all the videos. So I hope that the knockback is implemented correctly. Yes, that's right. I got people in the chat on there. That's not the wrong screen. That's the right screen. <laughs> just, I did that on purpose. The chat? Yeah. Watch the chat. Well, this way the people that are watching on YouTube can see what's going on with the chat instead of just looking at our ugly mugs all night. You know, we don't have Kai on to give them the give give us the. <laughs> but if they can't, see, but that's the point of the chat. The chat is an exclusive thing to watching live. Oh, oh, yeah. I'm sorry. You're pretty You're quickly. Quickly. I made a mistake. I made a terrible mistake. We can't show the chat to anyone. It's copyrighted. <laughs> something I don't know. All right, back on the Guild Wars too. I'm just messing around. I was just waiting for somebody to post something that it was. Is not supposed to be on YouTube or something. <laughs> oh, no. So, let's go on. We got the interrupts. We talked about that. Highest health to lowest health of all the professions. Warrior and Necromancer are classed as high health characters, which is kind of something surprising. I didn't know the Necromancer would be considered a high health character, but it kind of makes sense because I think a bunch of their abilities 
sometimes cost l health in order to use them, to trigger them. Like you use the, the blood magic or something like that, but I could be wrong. Um, maybe I'm thinking of lol or something. Anyway, uh, medium health, ranger, engineer, guardian, low health, thief, mesmer, and elementalist. And that kind of makes sense. Uh, so the elementalist has... Uh, and the Mesmer are both low health and low armor, but the Elementalist has that, uh, the rock, um, rock mode, earth, earth attunement. Sure. Rock mode. Rock mode. <laughs> I just figured he pulls out a guitar and starts jamming. Pulls out an axe. All right. And the, but the Mesmer has low health and, and, and from what I understand, they said, well, you know, the Mesmer, the, the Elementalist has earth attunement. The Necromancer has Death Shroud to help them get some defense. And the Mesmer has all these confusing clones, and you don't know which one to attack. And I was worried about that. I'm, I'm still worried about that. But again, we'll have to see on that. We just had that whole discussion. Um, yeah. They talked well, about World versus not World. not like glass cannons, but... Yeah, we'll find out. They talked about World versus World. Uh, and specifically, they said there's a score system based on which objectives you hold. Scores happen every so often, and you gain points for each objective based on how big it is. At the end of two weeks, the team with the highest score wins. As you gain these points, you pass thresholds of score that give you server-wide, server-worldwide bonuses. So really, everyone's a winner! So, that's a pretty interesting way to do it. So that, you know, when you pass a specific threshold, people playing in the PvE area will get some kind of boon. And it's like, yay, thanks, world versus world PvPers. You made our lives better. Well, I think it goes beyond, like, everyone's a winner. I think it goes more to, like, building that server. Like, oh, the guys are fighting in world versus world for us, and they're getting us these cool benefits. So, like, maybe I'll want to jump in with my friends to exactly. help out. Exactly. I think that's exactly what it is. It's sort of an advertisement for world versus world. Um, um, game ad. Somebody in chat, this is why I love chat, because we have people smarter than us in there. <laughs> <laughs> somebody in chat mentioned the fact that they said that when you cast, uh, you know, the, the clone skill, whatever it might be called, and somebody's targeting you, they will immediately lose you as a target. That's a big deal. That, yeah, that's um, definitely necessary. Yeah, well, it's necessary, but can you imagine in a, in a bunch of chaos you know using that skill and, and kind of abusing the fact that they won't be able to nuke you or finish you off i mean especially it's... if you see them channeling their big meteor or whatever yeah, yeah it, it could be like a dodge almost just like oh no the laser beams coming <laughs> illusion <laughs> look out for the laser you don't know which one i am anymore <laughs> Well, maybe that's the reason why the mesmers are going to be so easy to kill or why it's, why they because have light armor and low health well, another thing is, does anybody know if, if I'm half HP as a Mesmer and I cast clones, are they all going to be half HP? I mean, I, think I would they assume would have so, to because right? the goal and what they've shown is that it, it has your name above it and it appears in all measures to be you, right? So I would assume that they would have to put that half HP thing above it. The, the, the bar would have to reflect that. Otherwise, it's like the, in, in the early Team Fortress 2 when the spy had the health that he actually had and not the health that he was disguising as. So it was kind of easy to tell who they people were when you shot them and their health went down. You're like, oh, that's a spy then, is it? <laughs> um, let's see. I mean, it's, it, I guess it, it is necessary, but I mean, what would be the alternative that when you make a clone that you rant, like either, let's say you're targeting what you think is the actual Mesmer, and the Mesmer jumps and does a leap, and then a clone's there. You automatically target the clone or the Mesmer, whatever you were originally targeting. I mean, it's sort of right. the same thing that... It That's is that now, not, now none of those are good. Clone. Yeah, what Jay says is, is the reason it's, it's kind of a valid point, because if, if you don't break target, then you can randomly select... You have to randomly select one of these clones, and then you might randomly select the Mesmer, the real Mesmer, and then it, it just negates the whole process. Whereas if you if your target stayed on the guy that you you were targeting, I don't know. It goes both ways. I mean, either way, I guess you still have to guess, which is the whole point of it. So, yeah, that's fine. So uh, let's see. Interesting choice. They're talking about gear. Like, if gear doesn't mean anything really, then why? What What does gear matter? And and they pointed out, well, gear does mean something. It's just that it's easy for everybody to get the high level gear, but there's a lot of options within that high level gear. 
it helps complement what you're trying to do. So part of your build, part of building your character, sort of like building your deck in, in Magic or building your, your skill bar in Guild Wars 1, is deciding what are you trying to do with this character? Are you going to try and stay at range and kite people? Are you going to try to get in there and do massive AoE right next to people? Or are you going to try, you know, so you'd have to build survival on your character because you know you're going to take hits. So you're going to build your utilities and you're going to swap out to utilities you think that are going to help your goal. You're going to choose traits that get you towards that goal. You're going to choose the two weapons that are going to help you get towards that goal. And you're also going to choose gear that helps get you towards that goal. Some of the example that they gave is, do you choose the sword that which bleeds when you crit or the one that recharges your dodge meter when you swap weapons? Those are just samples that may not appear in the game but should give you an idea of different weapon, what different weapon choices might do. So that's some pretty interesting examples of what your weapon choices could get you. I like that. That sounds awesome. Yeah, it does. I, I mean, gear, gear is always going to be, I mean, vindicative of the person's player level, skill, whatever you want to call it. Because, I mean, even in Guild Wars 1, you know, everybody said the same thing. You know, oh, gear doesn't really so much matter, but it did. You know, you could tell somebody that was set up correctly by inspecting them. And, yes, everybody had the same base armor gear, um, but... They, you know, even in Guild Wars 2, they offer so much to customize that, and the way you customize that is going to show, first off, whether somebody knows what they're doing, and secondly, um, if if they're respect for what they're trying to do. You know, if I want to be tanky, uh, I would obviously put more health, you know, HP tokens or runes or whatever you want to call on my gear in any game versus a attack power, you know. Mm -hmm. So it, it's still going to be coming down to everybody and... and People are going to say, oh, I don't do this, but everybody does it. You're going to inspect somebody's gear to see whether they know what they're, you know, equipping themselves for. Gear score, yeah. <laughs> exactly. So, now that brings up a good point, actually, though. Because there were a lot of very interesting things you could do outside of the game with add-ons that would scan your gear and upload it to a thing, and you could show off your gear to people outside of the game, which, again, eventually got turned into the WoW Armory. But I think, based on what we've heard, there's a lot of things that the out-of-game website will allow you to do with regards to, uh, to Guild Wars 2. They talked about the marketplace will allow you to view the auction house and do everything on the auction house except for putting items up, to, up for sale. And I think the point of that was that uh, they don't want people to be able to literally play only the market house, the, like the auction house game, and never launch the game ever. They just try to make money by, by building the auction house. So <laughs> oh, God. if the only way to put items up for sale was to actually launch the game, at least you prevent people from doing that. I'm sorry, I'm picturing some guy at home sitting, like, wearing a business suit, sitting at his computer, just, like, manipulating, exactly. like, like exactly. the auction house in Guild Wars. Like, oh, I gotta buy and sell cloth, it's high, it's high. Yeah, he's got the I little Bluetooth in totally, his ear. I am totally innocent in this conversation, and I have no idea what you're talking about. I've, um, heard, oh. I've heard rumors, Freelancer, I've heard rumors. That was yeah. you, wasn't it? You're the just, reason just... that they made this exception. It, just be glad that you didn't have me in your economy Tales of Tyria episode. <laughs> oh, <no. laughs> because um, my guild knows me as the, uh, as as the uh, how should I word this, as the guy that spends half of his game gaming time at a auction house. It's bad. It's really bad. <laughs> wow. <laughs> like uh, it's it's horrible. I have the I have multiple characters. I'll be. Alt tabbing between different characters. <laughs> you basically really open a company. To... I feel I feel really embarrassed saying that. I mean, thinking, <laughs> looking at the outside now that I'm not playing WoW anymore, you know, looking from it from the outside in, it's like, man, you know, I really just wasted hours of my entire life doing that. Um, I don't know how people get into that. Oh man, it was no idea. You know, I had to control different markets. You know, I I would undercut and and. Buy out other people. I mean, it, so you'd it was buy out uh, all of the all of the the oh, I kept ore, telling me I need to be like a stock up, broker. I was doing. What's that? You see, so you'd like buy out all of the thorium ore from everybody, and then charge like twenty <laughs> gold more. The price. Like, I used to do that. I'm like, I used to get like up. hate mail in my inbox, like in WoW, because this guy, all right, puts it up for you know an insane amount of money. I buy it all out on purpose so that I can put up my quadruple the amount of what he has for half his price. <laughs> And he would, you know, people would just send me so much hate mail. You're ruining the economy and stuff, and yada yada yada. I'm like, this, <laughs> it's, uh, I don't know. We're it's not going to go into design. that. It's by design. All right. I would have choice words about the U.S. economy to follow up with. So, <laughs> Ooh. oh, Ooh. bring it home. Ooh. 
So yeah. there's a couple Burr. more things that we know about the out of game stuff. You'll be able to view dynamic event status so you can look at a region, like a map of a region and say, oh, look, Takadal's up, you know, or something like that. And you can also like see guildmates locations on the maps that you're seeing this on and like chat with them and say, no, 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 you got to go north to get to Cottle. You, you, you're going south. You need to go no the other north. Come on, man. Turn 180 degrees and go that way, you know? <laughs> and uh, that, I mean, you could, the fact that you can be in guild chat from like your, your, your iPhone is an, I, I, that's awesome. I love that. I can't wait. Yeah. If you, if they really go forth with the whole chat functionality, I mean, it would be so – I'd be, like, nerding out on my way home from work, you know, typing to all my guildmates, all right, guys, let's meet up at this time. I mean, can you imagine that? That's, like <laughs> – that's good awesome. To, it's good to know who's on so you don't have to go through the trouble of logging on just to realize that, oh, no one's on. Yeah. You know? <laughs> yeah, then I don't have to launch the game. It sucks. I don't got to – it saves me that five minutes of launching the game. Sorry about my computer. <laughs> And by the way, kids, I am not signing on Guild Wars 2 while driving. <laughs> <laughs> I Don't promise. try this at home. Oh, the guy with the, with the broken space bar is back. I love that guy. Don't, don't drink and drive. Um, don't log into your guild and drive. <laughs> and you can ping a location on your phone. And it'll show up on your guildmates' map in game. <laughs> so you just stand there. You accidentally put it in your pocket when somebody walks up to you. The boss is walking up to you. And it's just, you know, it starts just pinging by itself. And the friends are like, what is he pointing at? I went over there and there's nothing there. He's like, oh, you got pocket ping, man. Sorry about that. Pocket <laughs> ping. <laughs> oh, man. That's awesome. All right. There's a couple more things I found in the Now Gamer interview with Eric Flanham. He points out that you can create at least one clone and one phantasm uh, with every single weapon that the Mesmer has access to. And I assume that's weapon set, probably. Utility yep. skills can also produce these, giving over a dozen different ways to eat, keep, create each type of illusion. So you can have, like, 12 different clone types and 12 different phantasms. So that's a good amount of clones, so maybe it can be confusing. We'll have to see. Um, the other interesting part, if you shatter multiple illusions... Each has their own AOE radius and can stack their effects on each other. So if you send your three illusions, you can send them at three different targets and put confusion on each target. Or you can send all three of your illusions at one particular target and then shatter them all and do AOE damage stacked on top of them or AO, you know, three stacks of confusion on top of them or something like that. That definitely gives you a lot of versatility with regards to sending the illusions and shattering them because that seems to be a very important part of the Mesmer is those shatter effects. Let me jump yeah. in and say this. What happens if I set the Mesmer on fire before he casts his clones or whatever? Does the fiery effect on all hmm. three clones, or is it still on the Mesmer? Another thing. Very good question. Another thing is um, if uh, <laughs> I believe the Necromancer had I thought your had question this, was going to this... end with, what happens if I set the Mesmer on fire? Does he burn to death? <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry. That was an awesome yeah. question. Go ahead. Uh, another thing is what if um, – you know, I believe the Necromancer has this uh, virulent poison type thing, right? Where, or one of the classes did, where if you cast it, people next to them take the damage, or mm -hmm. they start passing on the damage. Um, uh, if something happens like that, I mean, can Mesmers carry those status effects? Also, or uh, the clones carry the status effects? Um, the answer you know, to that question is... How so. interactive are they, is what I'm getting at. Yeah. yeah. It's a good question. It's a good question. Only <clears throat> time will tell. Yeah. yeah. Only time will tell. Not really time, but videos in more demonstration. <laughs> yeah. In a only, demo, maybe. Only that might physical tell. evidence will oh, tell. Uh, time. <laughs> okay. All right. So the last piece of information I got from that interview is that ArenaNet has a rough plan for the first two expansions and a rough idea of what their live team will be working on when the game is released. I have a rough idea of what their t live team will be working on when the game is released, and that's all the stuff they didn't get to finish while they were working on the game. <laughs> like, yeah, we meant to finish up that boss that was supposed to be in this area here, so we'll create a new dynamic event that makes it look like he appears. <laughs> but that'll be three months <laughs> after the game comes out. Well, this is not a new thing, really. I, I mean, know. Blizzard, when they were in uh, beta for WoW, they actually posted like their ten expansions that they wanted to do, like how the leveling system will work, and they've actually followed it somewhat. Wow, really? Closely, yeah. Was the I pandas the on there? Because I don't think that anybody. Expected I think that. pandas were like a cataclysm is where it went segue, but like they're they're planning ten levels in expansion. Mm -hmm. They were starting with TBC, and then they were going to go to Northwind. 
and they were right on for those two. Well, yeah, those were the don't easy get me, Don't get me started on the pandas. Oh, God. Pandas. <laughs> don't get we talked about pandas. pandas before. Don't open the can. No, don't do it. But it's got an easy open tab right here. There's pandas, and then we can start talking. No, don't do it. <laughs> Eat the pandas. All right, I think we've gone on long enough. Um, <laughs> any, any final thoughts, Mesmer, or any other related to what uh, we talked about here today? Did I miss anything? Chat room, what did I miss? But in the meantime, freelancer. Uh, no, you didn't miss anything, Bridger. We'll, we'll agree to disagree on the Mesmer. How about that? <laughs> I, I, I'm, I'm just as concerned as you are, but I'm hopeful that I'm wrong. Or that you're wrong. Or that yeah. things work uh, out okay. I hope I'm wrong. I was the one that wanted to roll a Mesmer. <laughs> <laughs> I know. <laughs> are you uh, really that upset about it? Yes, I am. I am. You are? I'll immediately answer Well, let me that ask question. you. Well, how I'm would you prefer that the Mesmer work? Uh, not with such gimmicky abilities. I mean, invisibility, cloning. I mean, come on. I mean, the only thing I saw that like opened my eyes was uh, the direct attack electricity skill, which they didn't even hot, you know spotlight. Um, it's just things that, as as a skilled player, anybody doing like hardcore arena, it, it just you'll you'll eventually get to the point where you can pick it up immediately, pinpoint the mesmer itself. And deal with it as if it were nothing. I mean, the Mesmer is going to have to have something more than these little flowery butterfly skills. I mean, <laughs> <laughs> in order to convince me. All right. Great. The black hole that is your camera not functioning anymore. What? Curses. <laughs> <laughs> what, what did I miss? Did I, any, any final thoughts? Um, I think Freelance is kind of on something with the Mesmer. It should be more illusion rather than, like, here's some clones. Have fun. I would Try love for guess. it for the for the mesmer to actually be able to affect the view of the other players. Like if he I'll casts see. confusion on you, what you see is is not what lines up with the real world. Like you may see and target the mesmer, but he's not actually there. He's behind you or something. Like, that you know mesmer's what I mean? a spy. That mesmer's that's a good point. <laughs> <laughs> mesmer is spy. <laughs> But you know what I'm talking about? Like, that would be really cool. If you could change how that character sees the world. Like, you actually change his viewfinder into the land of Tyria. You know, it goes black or maybe it goes shimmering colors or something to distract them from being able to play. I don't know. What that the would confusion be really thing? You could do something crazy like maybe their ability, like, numbers don't match up. So, like, if they hit five <laughs> and they're thinking it's going to be a weapon ability, they hit, like, one of their, like, elites by accident. That'd be crazy. <laughs> like, why this, can't it do that? <laughs> this guy in chat, 23this or whatever his name is, just said the most awesome thing ever. What if he had a skill that made, like, the elementalists in your party all of a sudden do friendly fire? <laughs> <laughs> that would be the meteor Whoops. The shower on your group. Uh-oh. Whoops. That would be awesome. All right. Okay. Vega, bring us home. Final thoughts. Um, I like the Mesmer. I'll, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to disagree with, with Freelancer. Um, it's all right. I still well, I, love you, buddy. <laughs> thanks, buddy. Give you a heart. Give you a heart. Um, Next time on I, Tales of Tyria, I everyone just, attacks and defends their favorite and unfavorite professions. Go! Uh, yeah. Um, I, I like, considering, I, I think it was a big challenge for them to, considering what they wanted to change and how they changed, you know, the game's mechanics to try and bring the Mesmer into it and still have them be, you know, trickery and illusions. I think they did a good job. I mean, I think it still needs a lot of work, that's for sure. Um, but I think it's a good start. So, excited to see where it goes. <laughs> All right, so, Freelancer prefers to see the Mesmer as the minstrel. Greats, like, yeah, it could be good, it could be bad. Vega's like, yeah, Mesmer, let's do it, yeah! And I'm like... <laughs> I'm, still, I'm still not making a Mesmer, ever. <laughs> <laughs> really? <laughs> wow. No. Guy wouldn't even try one. <laughs> My plan is I'm to try engineer. it eventually. I'm trying every single class. But uh, Mesmer, we'll see how Mesmer that goes. Will be last. All right, guys, if you think differently and you want to tell us why we're wrong, go ahead and send us some email. Feedback at talesoftyria.com is the email. Tell us what we think we should talk about, why we were wrong in this, why the Mesmer's going to be awesome, why it's going to be terrible. Just give us some feedback. Well, maybe we'll read it on the show. I got some very interesting feedback about how all of our walls are really boring, and he offered to come over to our houses <laughs> and fix it. Did you see that? That was a very interesting one. So That is not boring. That is not boring. <laughs> That is a tapestry. I mean, especially when you're pointing at it with a sword. Yeah, oh, okay, he's got it fixed up there, too. 
We had the cat for a while. That was pretty interesting. The cat was interesting. Yeah. We gotta add background birds to my shoulders again. All right. <laughs> Feedback at talesofteria.com is the email. Uh, also, check us out at YouTube. Check us out on the uh, subscribe to us our podcast at talesofteria.com. Hit the donation <laughs> button if you'd like to help. Freelancer will provide you hours of enjoyment on his Twitch.tv channel slash freelancer. Twitch.tv slash freelancer. Bridger, Bridger, you have to put up the uh, thing where we, everybody can see everybody. <laughs> oh, I do. That's right. Good night, everybody. We'll leave you with this. Right. Contemplative. Leave it up, <laughs> I'm being a mesmer right now. Shush. <laughs> <laughs>